In this video, we'll look at the one chart that explains what is happening in cryptocurrency right now, and it is this. This is the Ethereum Bitcoin chart, and we're going to look at why Ethereum is gaining ground consistently in terms of price appreciation versus Bitcoin, looking at the Ethereum merge, how that's going, what's happening, and some of the networks that are building off the side of Ethereum, some of the coins to be looking at, like Polygon, Optimism, Arbitrum, um, different coins that are launching and really growing the Ethereum ecosystem, making it cheap and efficient, which is obviously a huge use case. So we're gonna look at all of that in this video. I'll leave some timestamps in the description below. So this is the Ethereum Bitcoin chart. What we're mapping here is how many Bitcoin it takes uh, to buy Ethereum. And what we're seeing is that this is the chart of Ethereum. So Ethereum is making a series of higher lows against Bitcoin in terms of its value. This is obviously important for investors. Now. That doesn't mean that Bitcoin is losing value, but in a comparative way towards Ethereum, Ethereum is gaining more value than a, a Bitcoin over the long term. This is extremely clear to me. You can see that Ethereum is making a set of higher lows against the value of Bitcoin over time. Now, this dump right here was Luna, 3AC, the bankruptcies, where you had a you know liquidity crunch uh, and obviously Bitcoin fell off as well, but Bitcoin fell off less than Ethereum. Now, the reason for this is because you had Celsius who were holding massive amounts of Ethereum and staked Ethereum. You had uh, 3AC who were liquidating tons of their Ethereum as well. They'd all done very well on Ethereum. They were big holders of Ethereum. And of course, they had to sell it out to liquidate large uh, pos you know, positions. Now, they had to do that with Bitcoin as well, but Ethereum suffered a lot more. Uh, various reasons for that, but that's what it did. And you can see it very clearly broke this resistance here and then fell down to a low against Bitcoin that we've not seen in a very long time. But recently, over the past month or so, uh, Ethereum has just rocketed back towards this long-term trend line. And you can see that the trend line is support once more. This is a very, very strong Ethereum chart versus Bitcoin. And where do we expect this to go? Well, will it just continue gaining uh, ground against Bitcoin or will it start to potentially take out levels as you can see resistance levels here? Um, is it going to jump up here? I would suggest that when it does uh, jump up to this level is because of the merge going successfully. If it isn't successful, if it's delayed, if there are extra problems, of course, then why would Ethereum continue to gain against Bitcoin? But obviously, a lot of people think that this is coming right now, and I'm going to explain the timeline for this uh, and why we could potentially see Ethereum break out and test these highs against Bitcoin over the uh, second half of this year. By the way, check the link to Binance in the description. If you don't have a Binance account, they will give you up to $600 as a deposit bonus. That's various different accounts in your spot account, in your futures account. Uh, just check the link for all the details, but up to $600 as a deposit bonus on Binance. We are in the very last testnet stage before the actual merge happens where Ethereum moves from proof of work to proof of stake. Um, in the background as an investor, the really the two main things you need to know is that at the moment, if you invest in Ethereum, you don't get any rewards in terms of dividends or you know otherwise known as staking rewards. When the Ethereum mainnet is proof of stake, Ethereum holders can stake their cryptocurrency and earn a staking reward. This means you're getting a yield from holding Ethereum if you stake it as an investor, which obviously increases the investment use case, especially for institutions that like to get yield. So that's one thing. The other thing that's happening as part of, as part of EIP 1559 is that they take some of the fees that the protocol makes and burns tokens. That reduces the supply of the tokens, hence raising the value of each of the remaining tokens. Both of these things are value accretive to investors, and that is why people are excited about this merge. It obviously makes it much more uh, appealing to some ESG investors going from proof of work, which is very energy intensive, over to proof of stake. We all know that. We've, we've heard about it all, all the time. But the important thing is that the final test net is going to move over, over to proof of stake between August 6th and 12th. So next week, that is the final test net to merge over to proof of stake. And if that goes well, then the actual merge of the Ethereum mainnet will be going live sometime in September. I would suggest that we look towards October for that. There's always delays with these things and you can't 
Um, you can't accurately predict when it will be because of the way that the hash rate changes over time. This sort of rough timing estimation will also be the case for the eventual Ethereum mainnet merge. Once we have a clear go ahead on an end of September merge, we can expect developers to project a long estimated merge activation window. In true Ethereum fashion, the merge will happen whenever it happens. This is why you're seeing Ethereum gain ground liquidity and a lot of the narrative right now, and it will not stop until the merge happens. Now, there's two things that may happen with the merge. You may get a huge um, kind of flood of trade going into the merge, and if it's successful, you could see a huge spike in the price of Ethereum. There may be some sellers as well. It's difficult to suggest what happens, but the amount of value that's being created from this merge is not just one single trading narrative. It's a very long-term narrative of, um, all of the profits of Ethereum going back to investors. And that's why people are very interested in this right now. And that is why you can see Ethereum gaining ground against Bitcoin as well, because it potentially can actually be a deflationary asset before Bitcoin is. So there's a lot going on here. The merge is just one thing. It's a move to proof of work, from proof of work to proof of stake. They also have the surge, verge, purge, and splurge, which all are just upgrades that make the network better, faster, more efficient, more reliable, uh, and obviously better for scaling in some way. Let's come on to scaling then. And many detractors of Ethereum say, well, it's too expensive and it's not going to scale. Well, that's just untrue. And it's objectively untrue at this point. We have to look at the facts of the situation. Ethereum is not just one kind of monolithic chain as it's called, but it's essentially a consensus protocol for different networks to sit on top. One of those is optimistic Ethereum or optimism. And what you can see here is that this low cost chain, which is now a layer two on top of Ethereum, is gaining ground. It's gaining users and transactions. And I've been using Optimism recently. The gas fees on this are about one to two cents, something like that, very, very low, um, but you have the vast majority of the security of Ethereum, you're getting that as well. So this is really where Ethereum is going. I believe Ethereum is going to be an institutional grade asset that is behind the scenes and that most users will not even know that they're using these layer two or even layer three networks over time. So you can see the most popular protocols on Optimism right now, Perpetual Protocol, Velodrome, which is I believe a liquidity protocol. So you can see all of the projects on here that are gaining transactions and the amount of addresses interacting with them. Really important uh, is that Optimism is on Uniswap and Aave. So, you know, this is a real layer two network that it is, you know, where a lot of the liquidity from Ethereum is going to go. Something that literally just came out yesterday as well is Optimism's incentive program that they're doing with Aave. So obviously Aave's massive application, everyone knows what it is. Well, what the Optimism market on Aave was very small, but they've just turned on incentive uh, yields for it. So if you use Aave, maybe to lend out some US dollar tether or something like that, Optimism are giving incentive yields now to use their network versus others. So this is obviously positive uh, for Optimism in terms of getting you know, TVL over transactions on there and users over to Optimism. Uh, and they're literally giving out Optimism. So if you have US dollar tether, you can lend that out on Aave for 2%, not a great yield, but then you get a 4% yield in Optimism tokens as a bonus. Right? So if you've got Tether, then you're getting those Optimism tokens. So Optimism actually has tokens. Arbitrum doesn't. Polygon as well does have tokens. So layer two networks on Ethereum, some do have tokens and some don't. Arbitrum token is coming, I believe. But where do these sit? Where do these layer two networks actually sit in the big scheme of things? Are they too small to invest in or what? Well, as we can see here on Token Terminal, great website, by the way, uh, totally free uh, for this. You can see how much Optimism is making right here over the last 30 days, I believe, $650,000. If we compare that to Arbitrum, you got $680,000 as an income on Arbitrum, no token yet though. How does that compare to existing alt L1s? Well, Avalanche doing about 800K, so it's there or thereabouts. Um, and then we have Polygon up here doing 1.3 million. So, you know, Polygon's doing twice as much revenue. Um, now, these are cryptocurrencies and not stocks, but, you know, having a revenue is actually a good thing. Um, way, way below Ethereum. Let's just go up and see what Ethereum makes, 2 billion. Uh, so there you go. Well, we'll do it over the last 30 days. Uh, it is around 80 million. So Ethereum is the king, the absolute king. And all of these layer two networks, of course, feed down to Ethereum. So if you're playing all of that, Ethereum is still the, the way to go. But these networks potentially have some higher beta, uh, and depending on what price you get them at, of course, or if you're yield farming, getting tokens for free, um, then obviously 
that's something that you can look at in terms of their valuation over time. I don't believe that Optimism is a cheap coin. If you look at its valuation, it's valued quite highly. It, it's not cheap to get. It's actually about doubled in price over the last month or so. If you look at this, it was down trading at 50 cents. It's now, what, over a dollar, 1890. So it's, uh, it's way up from what it was. Now, if you're getting incentive tokens on Aave, that's fair enough. But what I want to look at is the fully diluted valuation of Optimism right now. Now, remember, this is a simple layer two network on top of Ethereum. And so it doesn't have a layer one network. It doesn't have its own proof of stake chain. That may be coming in the future. But as you can see, fully diluted valuation of, of Optimism right now, 8.5 billion. Look at the amount of supply that's left. We've got around 214 million coins in circulation there's a potential 4.2 billion. So as you can see, the current market cap is 422 million, but fully diluted, if all of those coins come out or those tokens come out, the fully diluted valuation is 8.4 billion. Now that's not great considering that if you look at something like Polygon, this fully diluted valuation, 9 billion fully diluted, but if you look at the total supply, we're about 75% of the way there. So what this is telling me is that optimism is valued in a relatively same way as Polygon Matic is. But there's a big difference, and that's the amount of transactions and users. Polygon has miles more users and transactions per day. It's like in the top three with Ethereum itself and, and BNB coin, Binance Smart Chain. So Polygon has way more users, almost 20,000 dApps already. And so it, you know, just looking at this from an objective standpoint, it looks like Optimism is slightly overvalued right here in terms of you know, how many coins it has left. So uh, just to keep in mind in terms of these valuations between each of these different coins. What I think value will keep accruing to Ethereum though is that everything is gonna move to layer two and feed down into value for ETH as a currency and the base assets. You can see here Lido, which is the largest staking provider for Ethereum that staked ETH, um, they are moving their tokens and that staked ETH tokens over to Arbitrum on layer two. Now this is going to explode the use case because a lot of investors say, don't want to invest in Ethereum, it's too expensive. You know, you move coins around, it costs you $7. That's just not good. I'm not going to invest in it. Well, just imagine if you can use something like Binance, um, you know, buy staked ETH or something like that and take it out onto Arbitrum. You're paying a few cents to get your stake teeth out on a layer two network. You can then go and put stake teeth into DeFi and some great yields, not pay any fees. So as fees come down on Optimism, Arbitrum and Polygon uh, networks on their new ZK EVM, low fees, but you get that security moat for the most part of Ethereum. So you know Ethereum's use case is going to explode with all of these different primitives. Now moving to low cost chains that still benefit Ethereum. So yeah, I sound like a complete ETH maxi and like everything's great. I do see some risks, of course. So the biggest risk is obviously the merge going wrong or something happening like that. And if that happens, there's going to be hell coming for sure. Um, but obviously they've just done it through different test nets right now. And this is the reason that Ethereum is gaining ground against Bitcoin quite objectively. Now, it's not my job to like one or the other of these coins. In fact, they really, I invest in both of them because they have different risk profiles and different exposures. Bitcoin and Ethereum in 25 years time will not be the same at all in terms of what they are for investors. One is a store of value and one is a kind of currency for its ecosystem of specifically blockchain based finance and potentially metaverse. Um, so this is going to play out very differently. Each coin has a specific exposure to a certain type of risk. But the real objective truth is that Ethereum is gaining ground against Bitcoin over and over again over the long term. And you know, hopefully this video explains some of the reasons why. The other risk, of course, is that this is all just pumped up a little bit too much. Everyone's getting excited about the merge. You know, we've already seen this pump up right here, you know, from the lows. You know, is that the move or is there more to come? Is it just overhyped to too many people in it? You know, is there gonna be a sell the news event? These are all risks short term in terms of a trade, but over the long term, you can just see it's completely, um, you know, clear to see that Ethereum is gaining value versus Bitcoin. And hopefully uh, this video explains some of the reasons why. If you want to get that $600 deposit bonus, link to Binance in the description. I'm James with Money CG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.